Hi all and welcome back to this methods three and four. Now, wow, last lesson we looked at um, the whole idea of exponential functions and there is one that is absolutely awesome and basically is uh, based on real life. There's so many examples out there of an exponential function where we have this y equals e to the x. E to the X, what is this E business coming to that? Now, if you are normally being taught by me, then the good news is you have work to do at the end of this. It would be awesome if you could use the Cambridge Essentials textbook series over here in Australia to do exercise 5B questions 1 to 6 every other part. Those of you who are watching in internet land, hey, how are you? Hopefully you are doing well. Excuse my phone just pinging there. Wow, I'm popular today. If you are new to these type of videos, I'm just here just having a bit of fun, really, just teaching and seeing how we do. Right, so uh, why not subscribe if you like what you see. Right, recap. In the last lesson we looked at exponential functions and these were graphs which had the form y equals a to the x. And here are screenshots from that lesson. If you remember, exponential functions can, generally speaking, always have the same form. They go through 0, 1 and in these situations if I had the graph of 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and 4 to the x, we can use that information to help us find each of these points. If you don't know why, go back. The lesson is awesome and hopefully explains in 21 minutes, wow long, what exactly you need to know about exponential functions. This here is when the value of a is greater than 1. When we have the value of a that goes between 0 and 1, but not including 1, then actually what we find out is our graphs flip. Again, it still goes through 0, 1. But in this situation, for example, if this was a half to the power of x, then that's exactly what you would end up with. Quick recap, remember, if we have half to the power of 0, it's 1. If we have a half to the power of 1, it's a half, which is explaining why we have this 1, 0 0.5. If we have a half squared, it becomes a quarter. And as these values get bigger, as we move along my x value, and then we notice that the y values get smaller and smaller quite quickly. Now this exponential growth, or in this situation decay, as I say, comes up in real world. We're going to look at an important function in math which is using aspects of this point forward. Please, please, please don't think this is just in a box. It isn't. Later on, you're going to start dealing with uh, probability, which is going to have a beautiful bell curve that is actually going to have a function of y equals e and there's something really disgusting here and it's got a really disgusting power but exponential function once again this e business is actually really really important so and I say here try and think about what the inverse of this function might look like you can actually already work out the inverse in terms of what it would look like because if you remember if we know that a standard Exponential looks like this. No, it doesn't. If we know a standard exponential looks like this, and we know that actually we can reflect in the line y equals x, then you should be able to work out what the inverse is at least going to look like, even if you can't find out the equation. So, what is e? What is this e business? Well, basically, it's called Euler's number. Euler. Now, lol to everyone out there because someone turned around and went, well, don't you live in Eulup? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he went, well, why isn't that pronounced Eurup? And I'm like, a uh, very good question. And once again, we come down to massive inconsistencies in the English language, which is just weird. Luckily, I speak it. I don't need to worry about where it all came from. So, first things first, it's Euler's number. Who is Euler? There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure, press pause, or even press pause. All I've done is taken stuff from Wikipedia. So thanks, Wikipedia. Great stuff. But he was a pretty awesome guy, and there is a little bit more about him if you are really interested. But he came up with this number, and it's irrational. It goes on and on forever, and basically is on your CAS. It has lots of uses in mathematics, but we'll show those a bit later on when we get into the course. Right, so what does it actually look like? We've, we've been to Euler's backstory. What does it look like? Well, basically, like every other exponential function, to be honest with you. Looks pretty similar, yeah? Well, there we go. Crosses through 0, 1. Tick. Has an asymptote here along the line y equals 0. There's x. And there is my y value. What is this all about? This 1, 2.718. Remember? Euler's constant. 
where we have the function of y equals e to the power of x, then e to the power of zero is one. So when x equals zero, sorry, uh, yeah, when x equals zero, y equals one. And when x equals one, we get, well, basically e. Now, an important point to notice for your methods exam, you're always going to be expected to write answers as exact values. And e is an exact value. So there is nothing wrong with writing a coordinate as 1 comma e squared or 3 comma e plus 1. For example, unless the question states otherwise, you should not put your answers in decimal points. For A-levels and all other courses outside, you need to make sure you understand what your exam board asks. But over here in Australia, we have to make sure that we write things in exact values. And e is an exact value. All right, so important information, asymptote, yep, crosses the x-axis, yep, is exponential in nature, thank you very much. And I'm going to say to you, yes, we can transform this. And again, it's no different from all the transformation we've done before, so I'm not going to spend too long talking about it. Let's try and make the grass fit. Right, more transformations, once again, unless they tell you otherwise, you have to do dilations, reflections, and translations. Right, now what I've done uh, to try and sort of mix things up this time is that the green graph is the base graph. So what I've done on each graph is draw y equals e to the x. And that's the green dotted line, just so you can see what's happening. All right, so first one here, y equals 2 times e to the x. Remember from the previous video, it's trick. And whenever you see this 2 times business, it's just telling you that it's a dilation away from the x-axis. If we have a look, yep, there was my original base point. Dilating away from the x-axis means all my y values change. In this situation, they change by a factor of two. So this was my original point, which I've just doubled. Now, because uh, Desmos, which is freaking awesome as a software package, or as a, a website even, um, doesn't do things in terms of E, or not that I could find, uh, we've got decimal values. All right, so we'll deal with it for now. But that was a dilation away from the x-axis. What have we had if we dilate away from the y-axis? Well, in this situation, we had y equals 2 to the x, which meant in this situation, that was a dilation of factor a half away from the y-axis. Now, again, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? Away from the y-axis, but it's getting closer. Look, again, English language, no idea. Again, here was my base graph. 1 comma 2.718 blah, 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 blah. We're dilating away from the y-axis. My x values will change, and they'll all change by a factor of half. Well, good news here is because that's 0 comma 1, half of 0 is 0, so it still goes to that point. But in this situation, my 2.718 stays the same, but my x value is halved. And that's true of all of my values. Thank you very much. Nice and quick and easy sketching of these graphs based on my understanding of the base graph, this y equals e to the x. Reflections, exactly the same thing. Rem uh, remember, uh, actually, ooh, let's just go back for a moment. Uh, again, it is vitally important that you make sure that you label your asymptote, which again, in this situation, is y equals zero. I'm going to reflections, yes. Oh, I'm so over these asymptotes. Just put the asymptote on, thank you very much. You will actually draw these far, far better. And my asymptote is gonna go on here as well. Y equals zero. Right, uh, reflections. Yes, reflecting in the x-axis means my y values change. There is zero comma one. My y value here would have to change to zero comma minus one. Here, one comma e. And here, one comma minus e because all of my y values change when I'm reflecting in the x-axis. What about the y-axis? Same thing, yep, brilliant. When there's a reflection, the x values change. Well, that starts at 0, 1, and 0 changing to 0 becomes awesome, or we change the sign, makes no difference, it's still 0. This, 1, e, which when reflected becomes minus 1, e. I love this stuff. Once you've learned it once, if you learn it properly once, it, you basically, I think methods three and four, you can do about three quarters of it. Translations, here is my graph of y equals e to the x. This one seems to have moved up by three places. Hence, yes, y equals e to the x plus three. That plus three is outside or stuck on the end of my function, and so that means it's a vertical translation. Now, very carefully here, we would have to make sure that my asymptote now it becomes y equals 3. 
Yep, see how the asymptote changes? Because the whole graph's been moved up, so my asymptote moves up as well. What about the next one? Y equals e to the x minus 3. Well, this has to be a translation of three units. That way, I'm getting so good at this stuff. My asymptote, because I've not moved my graph vertically in any way, shape, or form, stays at y equals 0. But 1, comma, e has now moved to 4, comma, e. We've moved that way three places. So just add three onto each of my thing. Now, one of the silly things I've done here is that's definitely 0, comma, 4. But I have been remiss and not labeled what that crossing point is there. Now, if I wanted to work out what it is, you'd have to remember that it's when x equals 0. So that would be y equals e to the minus 3. So I could, in exact values, put 0, comma, e to the minus 3. And that's perfectly acceptable if it's allowing you to do it in exact terms. Remember, when given base functions and asked to come up with the image, you can do shortcuts to help me. Again, I love this. There's actually somewhere, and I would assume in the UK, because they look very much like UK road signs, that there's somewhere called Shortcut Road. I, I think it's awesome. If I ever move to the UK, that's where I'm going to live. If I ever move back to the UK, that's where I'm going to live. All right, so shortcuts. Dilations, reflections, translations. Really, really important for you to remember how to do this. This is, and we haven't done a lot of practice on this really, barring at the start of the year when we actually started doing all of this stuff. But here, here's an example. Find the rule. So you're going to have to find the rule when the, uh, sorry, of the image of the graph. So this tells you it's my original function is y equals e to the x undergoes the following sequence of transformations. So they've given you a sequence. So the first one is a dilation of factor 3 from the x-axis. So dilation. Let's go back. Dilation from the x-axis tells you to replace y with y over b. So I want to replace y with y on 3. Is that a factor 3? Yep. So that's what I'm literally going to do. There is my equation. I'm now going to make that y on 3 equals e to the power of x. So y now becomes 3 times e to the power of x. I could write it as 3 e to the x. I'm going to put 3 times e to the x just so that I remember it is um, a translation, uh, sorry, a dilation away. So that's the first one done. Right, followed by a translation of 4 units in a positive direction. So I'm going to go with that 4 units. So what I'm trying to do followed by Oh, sorry, I've just missed one. I've ticked one. Followed by a reflection in the x, uh, sorry, in the y-axis. So again, my shortcut says when you're reflecting in the y-axis, replace x with minus x. Okay, let's do that. So x is going to have minus x everywhere. So y is equal to 3 times e to the minus x. Wow, awesome. Now I'm going to move on to the translation of four units in the positive direction of the x-axis. So four units in the positive direction. The shortcut says replace x with x minus 4. OK, so that becomes y. So there we go. So remembering x is so equals 3 times e to the minus. Where I see x, I've got to replace it with x minus 4. So that minus sign now goes outside my set of brackets. And finally, the question stated uh, a, a translation. Three units in the positive direction of the y. So again, replace y, uh, sorry, negative, sorry, three units in the negative direction of the y-axis. Oh, interesting. Now, we would normally replace y with y minus k, just choosing a letter. But because we're going three units down, that means we go replace y with y plus three. So once again, using this, y plus three is equal to three times e to the minus x minus four and so y would be equal to 3 times e to the minus x minus 4 minus 3. Now that's certainly one way. I would imagine an exam might also write it as this. 4 minus x. And all I've done is move that minus sign, multiply the minus sign out, and made it look a little bit nicer. There we go. 
this type of stuff I think is awesome. Uh, I actually, because they've given me a set of shortcuts, there are things I can learn, there are things I can do. I, I know what base graphs look like. So long as I've got all of this information and I know how to translate, then actually it's not too complicated. Thanks very much, Mr. Euler, who I have to say, if I'm being honest with you, you look a lot, lot better in that one. I'm really not sure what happened there. You don't look a happy bunny. And what on earth were you wearing on your head? I'm sure, it was fashionable at the time. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for watching. That is it on the exponential function y equals e to the x. If you have enjoyed this video, subscribe, tell the world. Otherwise, well, please don't tell anyone. Thanks. It's been good. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.